Hello and welcome to CVAT Academy, your go-to training hub for mastering data annotation with CVAT. In this video, we'll show you how brush-based labeling works in a real task. We'll guide you through the annotation process step-by-step, step, explain why a consistent workflow matters, and share some helpful tips along the way. Let's go! As usual, let's begin by reading the instructions. We'll open them by clicking the Guide button. In this task, we are required to annotate the background, floor, chairs, and tables. Background. This includes everything that is not part of the floor, chair, or table. For example, walls, windows, decorative items, or objects that are not a central part of the scene. Floor. The visible part of the floor in the image. The floor must be fully covered with a mask for this category. Chair. All chairs in the image. Each chair must be individually annotated with a mask. Table. All tables in the image. Each table must also be annotated with its own mask. Here is an example of a fully annotated image. General requirements. Use the brush tool to annotate. Every pixel in the image must be annotated to avoid unmarked areas. There must be no overlaps or gaps between masks. Each mask should clearly define its object. Every object must be assigned its own mask. Everything that doesn't belong to the floor, chair, or table should be marked as background. Close the instructions and start annotating the image. When dealing with full image segmentation tasks, the key is to maintain a consistent annotation sequence. That means starting with objects in the background and finishing with objects in the foreground. In most cases, it is better to start segmenting the background and surface as the objects requiring annotation are always in front of the background and rest on some surface. Thus, the background and surface are partially overlapped by the objects. In this task, we should begin annotation with the background and floor. As they serve as the background and surface, let's first annotate the background. Annotate it so that part of the mask overlaps with the floor. This will allow us to later trim this mask using the floor mask, creating a clean boundary between these areas. Next, annotate the floor. Don't forget to enable Remove Underlying Pixels so that the mask trims the background mask after saving. Notice that we annotate these masks with overlap across all foreground objects. This is intentional to ensure the entire frame is annotated without leaving gaps or overlaps between objects. If you enable Show Bitmap, you'll see that the entire frame is covered by the annotation. This way, everything behind the chairs and table is already annotated. You can hide both masks to avoid distraction during further annotation, as the next masks we annotate will trim the background and floor masks. Now we move on to annotating the chairs and table. Here, it is also important to maintain a logical annotation sequence, otherwise mistakes may occur. The challenge with such images is that there are many overlaps between objects, making it crucial to determine which part belongs to which object. Let's define the sequence. It will look like this. Pay attention to this area. We will need to annotate the table after the two chairs behind it. However, the left leg of the table overlaps with the first chair, and part of that leg is also overlapped by the same chair. In this case, we will proceed as follows. Annotate the part of the table leg that is partially overlapped first, then annotate the two chairs. Finally, annotate the remaining part of the table. Start by annotating the part of the table leg that is partially overlapped. We won't annotate the entire leg, only the portion that is obscured by the chair. Hide this mask to avoid distractions. Now, annotate the first chair. Visualize the chair structure mentally to identify which parts belong to it. It looks roughly like this. Begin by annotating one of the chair's legs. You can annotate the object in parts. These parts don't necessarily need to be connected. Annotate the leg as follows. Annotate the next leg and the rest of the visible parts of the chair, ensuring slight overlap with the table or another chair if they cover this chair. Next, annotate the second chair. Here are its parts. Start annotation. Annotate this chair in parts as well, slightly overlapping with masks of the objects that cover it.
The table is next in line. Previously, we partially annotated the left leg of the table since it is the farthest part among all objects. Now make the mask for the table leg visible and switch to editing mode by holding the shift key and double clicking on the mask. And annotate all remaining parts of the table. Finally, annotate the last two chairs. Let's start the annotation with the left chair since the right chair is closer to the camera and overlaps the left one. Annotate the last chair. There should be no issues here as this object is almost entirely unobstructed by others. We have completed the annotation of the final object. Restore the visibility of all objects and increase the opacity value to better view the result. Segmentation is a meticulous process where maintaining a logical sequence is crucial. By starting with the background and surface and gradually moving to the foreground objects, we ensure a clean and accurate segmentation. Attention to detail, especially in overlapping areas, is key to achieving a high-quality result.